Hi. I thought I would share a little bit with you um, about the Pittsburgh. I always call it the Pittsburgh Fiber Fest, but it's the Pittsburgh Creative Arts Festival. Um, we attended back in August over in Pittsburgh, where else? And um, it was my first big like indoor festival. I know some of our crew had gone to this one in particular before, even though it's changed a little bit. But um, so I thought I would just share a little bit of my acquisitions um, that I acquired <laughs> while we were there. Um, first of all, I just wanted to talk about the um, we had a scavenger hunt. Okay, that was pretty fun. I enjoy a good scavenger hunt and we had to find all of these items and different booths and some of them were just like right out there in the open and others were like really hard to find. So, um, yeah. And, um, I don't know. That was a lot of fun. My favorite, well, there was a lot of favorite booths there. I really liked fiber seed and 29 bridges, but I purchased from fangirl and I know that there is another fangirl out there, but, um, she is out of Oh, good grief. I want to say Wisconsin or Minnesota. I want to say Wisconsin. I hope I'm right. I should have done my research, but here is her logo and I'm going to flip it on the back so that you can find her. Let me see if I can get it to focus in on it. Maybe not. Darn it. There is a QR code. I don't know if that's going to come through and that may be a little bit better. Find her. She is hilarious. So easy to talk to. And my screen just got really dark all of a sudden. Let's see if I can adjust that a little bit. Maybe not, but who cares, right? I'm outside. I couldn't go in. Hello. Look at how pretty it is outside and the humidity is gone. So I am enjoying a little bit of outside time here uh, since we couldn't get together to podcast. So hopefully this, I don't know why it got so dark all of a sudden. So we'll adjust just a little bit. Not that you need to see this mug. Hey, look, that lighting's better and you can see what's left of my pollinator garden because it's going fast. What I purchased from Fangirl, as I was saying, it is called I Despise Academics. And it cracked me up because most of you know I'm a teacher. <laughs> so it kind of made me laugh. But it is from Gilmore Girls, which I've got season one sitting out, ready to go. I don't know. Every fall, I seem to have to watch that again and again. My husband is dreading it. Um, he just looks at it and goes, no, not again. And I'm like, oh, yeah, it's coming out again. So here is, it's a zebra, which I have never knit with a zebra before. I don't know if we can, never done the focus on my own. But I am just doing a basic vanilla sock on zero circulars and um, it's fun. A little micro stripe stripe there and um, so it's just my go-to grab because currently what isn't a go-to grab, I'll give a little sneak peek, is my Christmas sweater that I'm working on which I'll talk about later but that's something fun I've been doing and okay I had it all organized out here sorry yarn. This is Treasure Goddess. This was another um, booth I purchased from. I didn't buy yarn, but I did buy some Star Wars stitch markers and it was a bracelet. Um, oh, that one I actually got from Fangirl and the Death Star was a gift from Fangirl. She was so fun. I was talking about all of my Star Wars stuff that I really like and she just gave me the Death Star. But um, it's a dangly bracelet. Look at that. Millennium Falcon. Millennium Falcon. I love it. But what I'm currently knitting, I have. Hang on. Where is it? I see it. There it is. There's the Death Star there. And I have a Stormtrooper. So I have all my Star Wars um, stitch markers on my color work that I'm working on here. So I really didn't purchase a lot at the festival. I got my yarn and I got my stitch marker bracelet from, um, from Treasure Goddess and she was so a lot of fun. I'm telling you, if you like green yarn, check her out. 
she nailed it. She's got such beautiful colors um, of green. It's amazing. And um, I can't wait to our next event adventure, which is going to be over at um, Young's Wool Gathering in Springfield, Ohio, coming up in just a couple weeks. It's September, I should know this, like 17th, 18th, and 19th, or 16th, 17th, and 18th, whatever that weekend is. If you live in the Ohio area, it's in the Northern Ohio, Northwestern Ohio area, Springfield. Wait a minute, that's central. I know directions. <laughs> Central Ohio. Um, come and check it out. I've never been there, but I've heard some really great things about this festival. And um, I can't wait to get with my girls again and um, go through and look at all the fiber goodness. So um, stay tuned for another uh, podcast that we will most likely film from there because it is a girls weekend for us. And I'm sure we will try to get something out um, on our channel soon. So on to the next one. Bye. Hi, it's Crystal from The Knitters Are Here. I'm just doing my little spot on what I picked up at the Pittsburgh um, Fiber Arts Festival. I know it has an official name that's a little different than that, but it was a wonderful weekend. We had a great time. The new format and the new um, location was really nice. We um, spent a day and a half just looking at yarn and all the other goodies that go with it, but it wasn't just for um, those of us who are knitters, there's also some quilting and obviously, you know, if you're yarn crafting, you can crochet with yarn as well. There were some wonderful vendors there. We met a lot of really awesome people. Wish we would have had the opportunity to interview several of them because they were just incredible people. Um, definitely have some new favorites, <laughs> but, um, it was just a really great weekend. Can't wait for our next one, our next adventure, which was go is going to be at Young's. Um, Springfield, Ohio, I think Jen said. So that is the weekend of the 17th. I think Friday is the 17th and we'll be um, leaving home Friday evening and spending all day Saturday there, spending the night, um, Friday and Saturday night at a um, cabin that we've rented. And then I think there are festivities also on Sunday before we leave. So a great weekend there. If you're down there, make sure you look for us. Um, we'll be the ones squealing at all the yarn that we see. Oh wait, that's everybody. Okay, so maybe we won't stand out. Okay, whatever. But um, so the things that I purchased, one of the first um, booths that we saw had some beautiful handmade soaps and um, I don't know if they had lotions, but they had a lot of really neat stuff. And uh, they had a, a show special. I think it was buy three, get one free or something like that. And so I got apples and spice and Aztec spice. Do we have a theme going here or what? And then tranquility. And the other one was a um, soap infused with wine and it's in my shower so i'm sorry you can't see it but it's wonderful really really like it a lot um another booth that we went to was fiber seed and they had a really cool yarn this is it and see how it is like half speckled and half solid they have a pattern that works extremely well with this yarn and it's called Depth, D-E-P-T-H, and I just lost some yarn. But the way it knits up is like this. And if you get the start right, it the pattern happens automatically, which just sounded really cool. And it's doubled, so you knit in the round, and then you attach it, you know, you um, kirshner it together as, to make a, um, what are they, infinity, um, scarf so that seems like a whole lot of fun and we had debated all of us doing that and then i think we just um 
decided no, all of us didn't want to do that. So the other thing that um, Allison and I found her um, first because we got split up because Jen and Darcy were just like, oh, yarn, 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 let's see more, let's see more. And they lapped us two or three times around the first room because we kept getting stopped by things that we thought were really cool. And I did not buy a single thing that first day. I was so proud of myself because like, I really don't need more yarn, but guess what I did? Day two, I made up for it. The, um, and Jen mentioned the treasure goddess in um, her little snippet but she had this wonderful cowl and I'm not sure that you can really see the detail on this. Maybe this picture will be better. It's done with two different sized needles. So one side looks like a twisted rib and the other side almost looks like chain mail, like armor. It is the, it is the coolest thing and I think it's going to be a gift for my sister, and I can say that because I'm pretty sure my sister doesn't watch this. So let me find get my yarn because it fell. I was trying to decide what I wanted to do. I really wanted to do that, and um, I think her name's Christine, maybe not. Um, the yarn goddess owner, um, she had a beautiful sample um, done in a silver with sparkle, and it is her sparkle toes sock yarn isn't it gorgeous and jenna was right the green that she had was absolutely spectacular but all of her yarns are kind of um piratey names and her um logo is a pirate sheep which is just too cute um so i bought the kit which had the pattern the skein of yarn and a couple of stitch markers that um and this one is called swimming swimming with the fishes and that is one thing my sister will not do. And this blue is like her color. And I just, I saw it and I saw the name and I thought, oh my gosh, talk about serendipity. It's totally, this is my sister's. This will be her Christmas present, this scarf. And it, I can't wait to knit it up because it's just gorgeous. And you, like I said, you use two different size needles. So what she suggested is using a circular and putting one size needle on one side and one the other size on the other. So that way you always know which direction you're going because you're using which size needle you're going. So I can't wait to try it. I can't wait to cast this on. And then I also got a second skein of that and I just love this. It's called Damsel in Distress, but it's just a beautiful pink that I am just in love with. So I'm these three yarns that I got I am just really anxious to cast on and see what um, happens when I finish it. It should be gorgeous. And yes, if you're looking in the background, that is Jose Canseco. Well, a reasonable facsimile. Unfortunately, not life size. What can I say? You know, back in the 80s, um, he was really hot. Sorry. <laughs> If you have any fun dolls like that, just be sure to let us know because, you know, it's all good fun, right? Hey, have a great um, weekend, Labor Day weekend um, and beyond, and we will hopefully see you when we do some um, filming at Young's. Take care. Bye-bye. Yes, you have my permission to do anything and everything you want. Thank you. I am, my daughter is more photogenic than I am. I'm, I tend not to. I, I get in trouble. I think you should. Okay. Walking in there all over. We're all the way down to the other coast. We're in this in China. We came in all the way when we pulled in from the end of it. And I'm like, so we were down half the lobby. So I'm like, okay, so where's the green tree? And then the guys like, oh, yeah. Hi, everyone. Allison here. 
I'm going to show you what I purchased or was inspired by at the Pittsburgh Creative Fiber Festival. So here we go. First thing is this powder wrap by Casa Pinka. I am not normally a shawl person. This is relatively small. You can see all the, the sampler like stitches in it, which I really like. And here is the bigger version of it. And the one that was done and was on display was with this fingering yarn for done by Creative, created for you by Laura. And this is their Crystal Creek yarn. And so I fell in love with the combination of this and actually bought it just to do it. Of course, right next door were Tika bags. So this little one just seemed to fit very nicely for this pattern and two skeins to do this shawl. Now before the show, I was inspired by this picture. Um, it's the boxy sweater by Joe Locatelli, but I don't want to do the boxy sweater. But I love the striping here. And I already got at uh, Worcester this iCat yarn from Swan Island. So I decide, well, I'm going to pair it up. So I have here something similar to what's on top here. And this is from the Cozy Color Works um, booth and it is a Merino called Ragdoll. Only thing is I did this, the, a little bit of a tension swatch and the iCat from Swan's Island knits up a little bit firmer than the one from Cozy Knits, even though they're the same yardage per weight but you know there you go and i love this one here which I, the contrast is also from um cozy the cozy color works so my big purchase <laughs> is this lovely blue face leister natural undyed from Isling yarn and it is spelled A-I-S-L-I-N-G and what attracted me to their booth was that it's all blue faced Leicester. I don't know if you're familiar with it but blue faced Leicester has a very long staple length which means that it's going to be soft, tend not to pill, have a sheen, a slight sheen, and have a great drape. So I had a sweater I really wanted to do this out of. Unfortunately, I thought I had bought 1,500 yards and it turns out I only bought 1,200 and there is no more left. So back to the drawing board with that one. I have to make a new pattern, but it's, it's so squishy. I love it. So I like inspiration for patterns when I go to these shows. This one is Jewel by Whitney Terrell a pattern I never would have picked out from the model on Ravelry because the model on Ravelry is this bright orange and it looks awful. And actually, I don't like the one that's here so much, but the lady at um, one of the booths that was selling um, yarn had this one done in a lovely gray and I bought these little uh, mini skeins to go with the gray that I already have. Another sweater that I would never have knit based on the Ravelry, but seeing it in person is the Rocket Tee. And I just think this looks so cool with these two different textures of a kind of mohair here with something else. But um, didn't buy any wool for it, just was inspired. Next, this was also at the Cozy Color Works booth, was this Coastal Fog. And after telling you that I don't like Accessories, I really thought this one was pretty cool. So that one may get done. They also had a different one there that was really interesting where there were like little short lengths of color in a yarn. And when you came up to that short length of color, you actually did a different stitch like pearls or whatever it was. So it really stood out. So that was kind of interesting. Another inspiration was this leftover city cowl. I thought this was just a great idea to use up stash if, if you're like me and you have a lot of leftover fingering wool that you could make it into um, a cowl like this. 
And besides the blue face Leicester yarn, the other yarn that I really liked from the show was this Yakagani yarn. I hope that's pronounced right. It's a little company from just outside of Pittsburgh. They sell online only and they had this lovely tweed. And to me, tweeds are hard to do and hard to get it right. This one is the Highland Tweed and you can look at their stuff on yakaganiyarns.com. I guess in Pittsburgh, they call the river the Yak, but I'm from Cleveland. So what can I say? Anyway, really looking forward to getting together with my girls for Young's at Yellow Creek. And we will let you know what was good there. Bye bye. Yeah, I have some of them. Colder or hot. Yeah? Yeah. They come with straws. So now I know why she looped us twice, because she wanted to get back here. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> we spent a lot of time here. We thought for sure you guys would have caught up with us. Yeah, And then well. we got caught up over there, and then we laughed you, and then we're like, we're just going to come back here. We, we fell in love with a couple of linen things back that way, so. Okay. And I tried on a linen thing from over there. Yeah. Let me show you what I... Uh, uh oh, I'm gonna get sucked in. <laughs> See you in 20 hours? No. No, <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is short and sweet because we already decided it doesn't fit. <laughs> this is so. This, this is mine. The names are adorable. Dreaded Spencer. <laughs> oh, sorry, I'm right sorry, behind no, you. I'm like backing up. Like I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, I did not see. I find your lack of yarn disturbing. <laughs> <laughs> that is a good one, especially for you. I have. I bought one of those mugs. Um, it says a long time ago in a yarn stash far, far away. <laughs> oh, that's adorable. That's, yeah. Aww. And then my three old grandson, I have a story trooper stitch marker and every time it comes over, he gets it out of my box. Hi. So, the Pittsburgh Creative Arts and Festival. We went. I took some video. Uh, you'll see it interjected throughout here. Uh, but there was a sign on the door that said that we shouldn't or it was ill-advised to take photos or recordings without permission. And there were three rooms uh, of yarn. And I couldn't, I couldn't look and enjoy and ask constantly, may I take a picture of this? May I take a picture of this? Um, I tried to do that and then I ended up getting so much feedback from the shop owner that they weren't able to focus on other customers and it just became more than I could handle and shop. So that is why we're doing as you see here today. Um, but let me tell you about my yarn haul and what I thought about the uh, Pittsburgh Creative Arts Festival. So it's still in Pittsburgh, but this year it was at the Double Tree. Oh, and side note, I'm I'm channeling my inner Jen and I took notes. So I have some, but not all. Um, but it was at the Double Tree uh, by Hilton in Green Tree, PA. Uh, comparing it to the way it was the last time we went several years ago, Crystal and I went, um, bigger, much bigger, three rooms. Uh, one was huge, full of yarn, and the other two were smaller rooms, but still packed full. Um, and so just going through, we did like a lap through and then went to the other rooms and did a lap through and then started shopping. Uh, I didn't have anything in mind per se, other than I, I wanted to just get yarn. I don't have any patterns in mind. Um, I didn't really have anything that I had to have. 
um, but I did look around and I don't have those little, um, one of the shops gave out little samplers, like they had their yarn kind of wound around a bobbin with the name and the color so that you could see the, see the idiosyncrasies of it, uh, before you chose to buy. So I can't even recall what the name of that shop is, but if we think of it, I'll put it in the show notes. Um, but just going through some of the uh, vendors that popped out to me um, were 29 Bridges, Fangirl Fibers, The Fiber Seed, Toad Hollow, which I've seen somewhere. I can't remember, maybe Cast On. I saw it at, the, at her shop. Uh, Treasure Goddess Yarn, the Yarn Birds truck, indoors, not in the truck, but still beautiful display. Uh, Yakagami Yarns and Frogget Yarns. That was a new one. I hadn't seen that before, so that was really good. And our one of our local yarn shops, Harps and Thistles Yarn Emporium, was there as well. Um, so just taking a walk through, um, the first purchase I made was, and, and I don't have a receipt, I don't have a business card, I wasn't given anything, so... I do think I took some video of it, so you may see it in the video, but this is the first thing that jumped out at me and I had to get him because it's Mr. Mouse and he's so darn cute, look. He's hand felted, he's got his little coffee cup. He's just so adorable, I wonder if I can get it to focus. Um, probably not, but yeah, he's, he's a cutie and he now lives in my office um and looks at me every day so i love him and yes um uh, my second purchase was at uh the same place jen got hers i think treasure goddess yarns stitch markers so it's the bracelet stitch marker um and i got star wars as well so all the different stitch markers um for star wars so yeah, those were super cute. She had lots of different ones. There was Harry Potter, and I really couldn't decide what I wanted. You know, I think that was the biggest problem with me the whole weekend is I didn't have a plan, and I didn't have a pattern in mind, so I didn't know what I wanted. So I basically wanted everything, and I just kind of ran around and around, and I went through the circle so fast that I, you know, I think I lapped everybody two, three, four, or five times. But yeah, so I got the little stitch markers. They all come off. This just is a, a loop. So, yeah, that was cool. And then um, in one of the smaller rooms at Harps and Thistles uh, was yarn galore. But I didn't buy any yarn. I bought books. So I got volume one and two of the journal. So this is Shetland Wool Adventures. So, yeah. I got two books. I love them. I'm reading volume one. Uh, it's about the Shetland Islands and the wool and the sheep and the knitting and the spinning and all the things as well as, you know, locations of things. I believe there is even um, a recipe or two, local pottery. I, I'm a huge fan of local pottery. I have a piece right here and a piece right here. This piece right here actually is by my uncle. So that's that one. So two books. Um, and then I, I knew I wanted to make like a t-shirt type sweater, um, maybe three quarter length, short sleeve even, nothing quite this short. This is a little too short and definitely not V-neck. Uh, V-neck is just for around the house. Um, I definitely like a crew neck. So, you know, we went round and round. I went round and round between two booths and fangirl fibers. Okay. I love this girl. She was a hoot. She had, uh, the best names on her yarns. Uh, and of course she had Star Wars related things and stitch markers with the golden girls on it. So she just was my vibe. She just spoke to me. 
and all her colorways were amazing. You know, I could see her passion in these colorways and I really liked it. So, um, I just kept coming back to her and coming back to her and it was, became this colossal joke that I just kept coming back and, and it wasn't buying something, but I did want something. So in, I don't know if you can recall this, but I am not a pink person. I generally gear myself towards neutral colors, blues, I know browns, uh, very neutral, but I just kept coming back to this same yarn and picking it up and squishing it. And I had to have it, had to have it. And I made such a production out of it that she threw in the bag for me. So this is the bag that it all came in. How cute is this bag? So fangirl fibers, we'll put a link to that. Um, but this is the yarn I ended up getting from her. It's pink. It's totally and completely pink. Um, it's a beautiful pink and I love it. And it's got a lot of navy and a lot of mustard, which may be the reason why I was completely drawn to it because of the blue and the mustard color that's in there and the deep greens. So while it is pink, it does have a lot more attributes that are up my alley. So yeah, do I know what I'm gonna make with it? No. Did I buy a sweater's quantity? Yes. So that being said, we walked around and walked around and looked at the different displays and what people were wearing and made some decisions. So let's see, I looked up uh, someone had on embers. I think the fiber seed dyer had this two sweaters on that I liked. So embers by Tim Can Knits, and then Magpie Tendency by Skanigan, and the Summer Sorrel by Wool and Pine Designs. So those are the three that I kind of kicked around. Maybe that would be good for this. Um, I don't know. I still, I'm still on the fence. I don't want anything that has a lot of texture just because of the color that this is, the way it's dyed. So if you have any ideas or thoughts, just put them in the comments below because I'm really looking for suggestions. Three quarter length sleeve or, you know, a little bit longer sleeve just above the elbow, maybe. Uh, definitely a crew neck. This is fingering weight and each skein is 437 yards and I have four of them. So, I mean, I could make a light weight, like long sleeve crew neck shirt. Um, I could go cropped, you know, my job now, I sit behind a computer all day long um, and I'm on Zoom meetings. So anything that looks good from, you know, the chest up, that's what I'm looking for. So that's what I got from Fangirl Fibers. Love it. Um, and then the last thing that I got, I went back and forth between two booths. And I, you know, I'm a sucker for how things look and the aesthetic and how her booth was set up. And the fact that she had these four color or these three colors um, lined up next to each other they just i couldn't i couldn't pass it up i really 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 loved it um yeah so i ended up getting a sweater's quantity <laughs> of yarn again without a pattern in mind from 29 bridges yarns studio so yeah and it came with a free stitch marker that uh, i have put somewhere and I don't remember where I put it. I'm sure it's in one of these baskets or places somewhere. Um, but the yarn that I got was hanging on the rack just like this. Does that not call to you? Does this really not call to you? I mean, these two like topes, these are the sock weight. Uh, this is colorway dusk. So this is dusk. It's more of a taupe, light, light, beigey gray. And then these two, this has a lot of the same kind of color to it. Um, my, 
window is kind of washing things out. But this speckle is in colorway Bijou. So yeah, and then this solid is, yes, another pink. Um, but it's rose gold. So it's not technically pink, right? It's close enough. But so again, no pattern was in mind. I just, there was also a very light cream um, that I thought about getting. And there was an even darker of this taupe, more of a deeper gray, uh, that I really almost bought them all with no pattern in mind, no intention, no nothing. So um, in her booth, she had uh, a bunch of different samples. And one of them is Velocore by Andrea Mallory. And I think that's what I'm gonna make with this. Um, so I'm gonna do Velocore with this one. I'm gonna use the taupe as the main body of the color. I'm gonna use the pink for the section that has the least amount of color. And then I'm gonna use the speckle as the most of the colorway. Um, so if you look at a picture of this, uh, you'll see what I mean. So Velocor by Andrea Mallory. What do you think? Do you think it'll work? I think, I think it's a really cool color. I, again, it's earthy, it's got some blues and just a hint of that pink. So yeah, I think, I think this is me and it calls out to me and I, I must have it. Um, but one other thing that we did see at that booth, the 29 Bridges, was a sample of the Leftover City Cowl. And that is by Casey Hurley. Um, we're actually thinking about doing that as our New Year's Eve cast on, um, or one of the other sweaters with that I had mentioned before, Ember's Magpie Tendencies, or the Velocor. Uh, we really haven't decided. We're just kind of kicking it around. We're also talking about doing a knit along uh, on Ravelry with whichever we end up deciding. I really think it was closer to the cowl that we were talking about. Now that I'm, I'm thinking back to it, maybe they'll remember better than me, but who knows? Um, and then, so that's my haul. That's what I got uh, at the Pittsburgh Creative Arts Festival. Uh, that was on August 20 or August 12th through the 14th, I do believe. And what's next for the Knitters Are Here is uh, Young's Fiber Festival. Uh, we can't wait for that. We actually have a and b We're planning a whole weekend, so there'll be lots of knitting. Lot, maybe I'll even cast this on while I'm there. Oh, maybe. Or maybe if you can help me come up with a pattern for what to make with this Fangirls, um, that would be really, really helpful. Here's the colorway if you all want to look it up on our website. Um, but yeah, so that's what's up next for The Knitters Are Here. And we hope to podcast while we're there. Uh, with time constraints in the holiday and our work schedules. Me, I have a new job. Um, so now I'm working uh, days I didn't before. And so it made it a little hard to get together to do this. That's why we're doing it separately. Um, I'd rather you see what we got than not see anything that we got. So I hope you enjoy this video. Don't forget, like and subscribe so that you know when things uh, are available for you to watch. Um, if you have any questions, just chat us up in Instagram or through our email account, and we'll be sure to get back in touch with you as soon as we can. Again, don't forget, like and subscribe, and never miss an episode. Talk to you later. Bye!